everyone. Our most essential learning competency for today is illustrate continuity of a function at a given interval. Examples. Using the given graph, determine if the function f is continuous on the following intervals. A, negative 1, 1. B, negative infinity to 0. C, 0, positive infinity. So, from here we can say that this is the graph from negative 1 up to positive 1. Since we can trace the graph without lifting our pen from negative 1 to positive 1, therefore we can say that the function is continuous at this interval negative 1, positive 1. Letter B. Negative infinity to zero. So this one is negative infinity to zero. Again, we can trace this graph without lifting our pen. Therefore, we can say that the function is continuous at this interval. Negative infinity to zero. Okay. So let's see. We have zero positive infinity, zero positive infinity. This one is zero up to positive infinity. Again, we can trace the graph without lifting our pen. So therefore, this one is continuous at this interval. Number two, determine using the given graph if the function f is continuous on the following intervals. A, negative one, one, B, 0.52. As you can see here, there is a hole, meaning to say at x equals 0, the graph of this is, of course, undefined. If that is the case, we can say that negative 1 to positive 1, the graph is discontinuous. Why? Because if we trace it from negative 1 to positive 1, we can not graph it without lifting our pen. We will be lifting our pen here at this hole since the value of the function is undefined at this point. So we can say that this one is discontinuous at this interval. What about 0.5 to positive 2? This one is 0.5. And this one is positive 2 from here up to this one. Of course, we can say that in this interval, 0.5 to 2, the function is continuous. Example number 3. Determine the largest interval over which the function f of x is equal to square root of x plus 2 is continuous. Here in number 3, the given equation is a radical equation. We know that this one should be positive. The radicand should be positive. Because if this one becomes negative, Y will be, of course, an imaginary. So what are we going to do? This X plus 2 radicand should be greater than or equal to 0. Because we know that 0 has square root, same as all positives. So X is greater than or equal to negative 2. Meaning to say, from negative 2 up to positive infinity, we can place it here. So the interval that makes the function continuous is from negative 2 up to positive infinity. Of course, we will be using here a bracket. Here, we will be using parentheses because we cannot identify the largest Problem number four, determine the largest interval over which h of x equals x over x squared minus one is continuous. So here, this one is the denominator. We have to avoid, of course, this one to become zero. Because if that is the case, h of x will be undefined. So what are we going to do? We will determine it first by making an inequality like this x squared minus 1 is not equal to, of course, 0. Solving for x, we have x is not equal to 1. Getting the square root, getting the square root, 
x is not equal to positive and negative 1. Okay, so what will be our interval then that will make uh, this function continuous? So we are avoiding this too because if x is equal to positive 1 and negative 1, this function will become, of course, discontinuous. So therefore, we can say that this is negative infinity up to negative 1. And then we have positive 1 to positive infinity. And of course, we also have negative 1, positive 1. Because all the numbers from negative 1 to positive 1 can be placed, of course, in x. So these are the three largest interval over which h of x is continuous. Example number 5. We have here a piecewise function g of x. It is equal to x if x is less than or equal to 0. It's equal to 3 if x is less than or equal to 1 but greater than 0. 3 minus x squared if x is less than 4 but greater than 1. And x minus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 4. Question here is, is the function g continuous on 0, 1? Of course, we have here 0 and 1. This one is, of course, included because we use bracket here. From here, we can say that this is defined. This is the interval 0 to positive 1. And g of x is defined, and that is, of course, 3. If you will analyze it, you can graph it without lifting our pen from 0 to positive 1. Now, what about for the second interval? This is 4 up to positive infinity. This one is included, so we have bracket here. And from here, you can also figure out that from positive 4 up to positive infinity, you can trace the graph of this without lifting your pen. So therefore, we can say that this one is also continuous at this interval.